my name is Pastor Ken Nyaga. I'm in the digital technology. Uh, they call me <laughs> digital pastor. And above that, um, God has called me by his grace. I'm a pastor at Christ Intervention Ministry in Nairobi City at Hotel Accra 6th floor. So it's always my pleasure to be with you. And I request you to be with us from the beginning to the end. Help us to share this broadcast uh, as, to as many people as possible. Thank you so much, our viewers and the listeners. Let's go to Isaiah 43, verses 19 to 21, and I read. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Verses 20. The animals honor me, the jackals and owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. 21. The people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. Amen. The second reading process. I'll take the second reading from the book of Luke, chapter number 8, from verse number three, uh, 43, Amplified Bible. And a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years and had spent all her livelihood upon physicians and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him and touched the garment of <coughs> the hem of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who is it who has touched me? When all were denying it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitude surrounds you and presses on you on every side. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I perceive that power has gone for, forth from me. And when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came up trembling and falling down before him and declared in the presence of all the people that that what reason she had touched him and how she had been instantly cured. 48, and he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go into peace in Jesus' name. She had spent a lot of money, put a lot of efforts. She had consulted the, the specialists and nobody seemed to be, you know, answering the problem that she had. And uh, we, we are not given the background of the Christian background of this woman. But it uh, seems like this woman had some interest with the things of the kingdom because by her understanding that Jesus was passing by and Jesus would change her life, uh, that tells us that there is something that she knew about Jesus. So what I want to say is that um, from this woman, there are many things we can learn our viewer and the ones listening to us, that uh, there are moments when things beat us in life. They beat us from uh, up, down, left, right, center, until we've got nowhere else to learn to. And probably the, the things that we trust as our avenues of rescue, they don't deliver. And sometimes in that, at that point, we come to our end. And that's why you see at some time she used to even visit the, 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 the physicians and probably the, the witch doctors and all that, but they could not answer. Amen. Until Jesus Christ intervened in a situation. And how did this come to happen? Stay there. We are going to go deeper and we will see what we can do also concerning our situation using the word of God and the faith as a tool to deliver us. This is very powerful. So I want us to understand a few things here that we learn from the story of this woman that if we also take these things they will help us to come out of the situation that probably could be fixing us into some place because if you don't get this understanding then uh, you might not be able to come out of the situation one thing I honor this woman for is that this is a woman who did not copy paste what to do from another person what came to her right away? She acted immediately. And therefore, I want to say this. We learn that God honors active faith. That is something that you need to understand. Anytime you are in a situation and you are trusting God to come out of it, 
It is going to have that understanding at the back of your mind, at the back of your heart, that I am trusting God who honors active faith. And what is active faith? This is the faith that you, you practice mm -hmm. because you believe that the one that you trust is going to do it. So this is what that woman did. And that is what brought her to that encounter within Jesus because, you know, Jesus was already surrounded by so many people. Meaning this woman had to persevere and make it through that crowd. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was not that secret that Jesus was not sensing that maybe that woman was there to come and do it. But you know what? When Jesus saw what has happened, that was faith that could not have been stopped or even ignored. And that is what made Jesus to stop, stand still and ask, who has touched me? Knowing that God honors active faith, it is a time to come out of dead faith and activate your faith. By beginning to act on what you believe, focusing and putting your eyes to Jesus, who is the order and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. And number two, we, need to, we see that when Jesus Christ, uh, this woman got an encounter with Jesus Christ, she was set free instantly. Something that untrappled her for many years, uh, all this time, just one encounter changed the entire story. The woman was completely healed with a novician who would even dispute what happened. So you need to know that as you run to Jesus, you are learning to somebody who has the capacity to bring to a dead stop whatever that is troubling your life. Share everything that you, you're watching from Facebook, from YouTube, and make sure that you're inviting as many people as possible. As your faith is building up, I am sure you are also getting ready to give an offering. You are also preparing your heart to have an encounter with Jesus because something great is going to happen in Jesus' name. God is speaking to us people through this message. I was just reading Isaiah 43 verses 21. Imagine God is insisting and he is saying that the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Because there are people who are annoyed with God that you feel like God does not know about your existence. You know, sometimes you can be in an issue that makes you feel like God forgot you. Like that man at the pool in John chapter 5. For 38 years, he was there with nobody helping him. Sometimes when you stay in a problem for long, mm. you might think like, God forgot me. And I want to help you to adjust your attitude right now. Because... There is an attitude that faith might not be able to ride on, especially when you think God forgot you. Please, I want to bring it to your attention that God is proclaiming it here himself, saying that I formed you for myself, that you may proclaim my praise. And that is why God is about to do something that is going to turn around everything in your life, because he is expecting you right now to start proclaiming his praises for the things that he has done for you. Now, the things that this woman helps us to understand is that God's power is above any other power, whether you know it or not. You should understand that God is above the power of your sickness. God is above the power of your poverty. God is above the power of the rejection that people might have, you know, uh, portrayed towards you. God is above the limitation. Probably we are talking to people who are in another nation. Where you are, it's not your country. Maybe you feel like you are already now uh, in prison there because probably the papers expired. Probably other things, uh, you know, they are against you and you are asking, oh my God, is this what I came to do here? But I want to tell you this. God's power is above all powers, including the rules. I remember one time when uh, Daniel was being persecuted, that these guys who, who are, you know, uh, coming against him, they went and told the king, can you sign a treaty, a covenant, and make sure you sign it according to the principle or the law of Mendes and Passions, because that one cannot be altered. I want to say this, even that cancer that cannot be altered, mm -hmm. God can alter it Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God's power is above all power that you know. Mm -hmm. Did they say that they took you to a witch doctor or you are taken to a witch doctor without your knowledge? Don't look for another witch doctor. Look for Jesus. He's the one with the solution. And I want to say another point here. That faith requires some level of risking. 
Some people really want to see things changing, but you don't want to risk. This woman, whatever she did from the beginning, it was total risk, pure risk. I am sure if this woman would have consulted a neighbor there and asked her, this is what I want to do, what do you think about it? Maybe the neighbor would have told her, oh no, uh, have you consulted with the protocol? Uh, I, are you sure it is going to happen? There are people who have planted doubts in your life. I always say this, the grace that God has given you, it's not upon every other person. Mm -hmm. Ride on the grace that God has given you. You could be the only person who is seeing the possibility. Focus and take some level of risk. Be a radical risk taker, you know. Be intentional in what you are going to do from now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I know God is going to do something and God is going to turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are looking at your company and it's like, oh my. Uh, maybe I had a lot of trust probably when the new government comes, things will change. And you, you see like the change that you are about to experience is closing down your business. Mm -hmm. I came to tell you this in the name of Jesus Christ. You are about to praise the Lord because a turn around is coming. Wow. When you begin to trust in this God. Take some level of risk. Some of you actually. You need to connect with God. Mm -hmm. Probably, when did God last day uh, uh, experienced a gift from that business that you feel as if it is at risk? When did you last day did an intentional giving? An intentional giving that is, you know, focused to doing something. You know what David did when that disaster came and the angel was killing people? He did a sacrifice that was intentional. Actually, when he was about to be given for free the oxen and every other thing, he said no. This is not the time to sacrifice to God that which cost me nothing. That was an intentional giving. And I want to tell you this. Sometimes why we don't see the result is because we are not intentional, including the, the faith that we talked about. I want you to be intentional right now, whatever the time that you are watching us. Even if you are watching us after this program, be intentional by sacrificing something for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of something that you want God to do for you. There are things that don't come for free. Some of the battles you are fighting, the devil worshippers have already sacrificed a lot. People have already sacrificed blood. Others have sacrificed money. Others have raised too much that if you just go empty and end, you might not provoke the divine power. You need to be intentional right now in the gift that you want to give to God. Have you been tithing? Have you been appreciating these kind of programs that are speaking to your life? You know, you, you are folding your hands, yet you want God to reach out to you. Can you now plan something right now? Because we are going to bring you to this point whereby we shall commit you to God, both for the things that you are expecting God to do in your life, and also for the sacrifices that you want to do for the sake of the kingdom. Of course, God is going to hear you, and there are numbers there that you can always use. Even right now, you can use them. You can use them to send your prayer item. You can use them to send your sacrifice mm -hmm. on that pay bill number, on that telephone number. And God is going to do something for sure because he is expecting you to raise a praise after what he has done has been accomplished. God is going to visit you. Sometimes uh, there are stories that you might not be able to give out here because people have been sending so many testimonies of what God is doing through this platform. But they don't know that the gospel is free, but to take it to them, it's not free. Even the bundles that you are using, you, you, it costed you money to have them. That's why you can watch us on YouTube, you can watch us on Facebook. And so I want to remind you that it is somebody else who has taken care of that and we want to become partakers of this gospel by becoming partners in the kingdom. I don't want you to be a stingy person. I don't want you to be that kind of a person who cannot, you know, stretch forth your hand and say, oh, let me become a blessing. I think I said this sometimes back, that when I used to be in, in high school, in 90s, I used to send uh, some part of my money using an envelope through the post office, you know, to support the gospel. And today I am speaking in the same medias. I want you to believe God for an encounter right now. You will come out of your problem in the name of Jesus Christ. Trust the word of the Lord. That sacrifice, that offering that you have, can you prepare it right now? Are we together? I believe you are following the instructions and now, can you put in key in those numbers that you see there? Whatever God is putting in your heart, you can even make it as a sacrifice. Sometimes you feel to give that which you have not planned because it is God who had planned for it, not you. And I want you to take this advantage right now in this atmosphere of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this brother, thank you for this sister. Thank you for this person who has been following from the beginning this message. And now, 
You've made this person to feel convicted that God, you can do something in his life and in her life. And beyond, they are also stretching forth their faith by giving a special giving gift, the offering, through the numbers that have been given here. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, honor this giving right now. It is a gift that is given out of faith. Some are giving sacrificially. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let an encounter that this person has been waiting for, oh God, now happen in the name of Jesus. Whatever the sickness, whatever the problem, whatever the challenge, I don't know, Lord, Lord what they are suffering, but you know them. You can see them from the hospital bed. You can see them from their sitting room. You can see them from the place of work. You can see them as they travel in these vessels. I declare in Jesus' name, right now, let an encounter that only God can and do come upon you receive it it's happening in the name of jesus it is happening mm. in the name of jesus it is coming oh, yes. in the name of jesus receive the strength yes. receive the favor yes. receive the victory that comes from god i declare in the name of jesus corporate has his servants here whatsoever that you trust in god for yes. it is settled now. now in the name of the father mm. and of the son yes. and of the holy ghost we pray amen, amen. god bless you amen.